recording and I have finally started recording. So there we go. Okay. It wasn't working. Okay. Well, we got three minutes left. So yep. 10 o'clock. But if somebody wants to start asking questions, by all means. Well, and, and what I will be doing um, is, is I will be muting everyone once we started and trying to use the chat, uh, the chat for questions, just so that we don't have 10 people talking at once. That might, that might be a little yeah, difficult. That might be a little difficult for us, for some of us typing, because if you're like me, you know, one figure at a time, it takes a long time to, 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 to type that question. Yeah. If you put your hand up, I can unmute you. That's yes. the other option. That'll be the best thing to do. Just if you want to ask a question, put your hand up and she'll unmute mute you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One quick question before we start then. Does anyone yep. use a 12 or 14 foot screen for flattening? Because we have a, a fair few regions. I, I noticed that uh, when we were doing this. Uh, you're, sort of, you're sort of breaking up and I, I, I couldn't hear your question. Okay. When. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. When when does anyone use a twelve or fourteen foot screen when they're sanding to to help level? Uh, I, if you get a, a screen, a screen will not help you level the green. It'll just follow the contour of the green. No, but a screen, it, a screen. A, like yes, a, yes, a like a rigid screen. drive, something yep. that's yep. rigid. Yes, yep. yes, yep. we do it. Yeah, we and do it, it every fall. Yes, and it helps flatten the low spots type of thing. That's, a that's bit. right. It takes it. It will take the sand off the where the high spots are and drop them off in the low spots. So if you keep doing it every year, two or three years, your greens are pretty well flat. Right on. Thank you. Charlie. Yes. Yeah. One question about the dollar spots. While I've got you on here, um, we're having issues. Of course, they've they've uh, grown a lot in the last few weeks. We don't have access to somebody that has a fungicide license to spray. Um, mm -hmm. what, what would you suggest for smaller clubs like us to um, address the dollar spots in the fall so that when the spring comes along, we've got a better chance at a, uh, um, a nice lush green to start with? Uh, I don't think you can do much you already got the dollar spot they're there to they're there to stay the only the only thing you you can do is I'll, if you uh well how can i phrase it so uh, i don't want you to hurt your green but there's a there's a fertilizer you can put in the fall and it's it's uh very high nitrogen i think it's 2200 or something like that i think it goes as high as 3000 uh but you have to be very careful because it's so high in nitrogen it might burn your green but i will green up all the spots where the the, the dollar spots are and, and you'll have a fresh start in the spring does vertical cutting help vertical cutting help aerating help you'll if we're, your aerator your your uh your time will take half of them out like it'll take the plug out get rid of them and fill up with sand so you'll get rid of half the dollar spot that way also thanks charlie but uh if you uh did it neil when, when i was down there did they give you a a sort of a remedy for dollar spot for the, the poor man dollar spot we call no uh no uh chemical did they give you yeah. a yeah it was part of the package uh this was included in there the problem yeah. is we're having a uh, hard time finding it right now. Okay. Well, if you need it, just give me a, a, a shout and I'll send it back to you. All right. Thank it, you. It, it works. The only problem is, is uh, the first you put that stuff on and, uh, and it rained two days later, it's gone. With the, right. chem with the chemical, it stays on the leaf. So I'm, I'm just going to... Um, mute everyone for for a couple of minutes and we'll get started um just let me see if there's anybody waiting to get in i think we're okay um so hi i'm karen atkin i am the secretary of the board at the olba and um when charlie 
left the board because he had completed his many years of stellar service on the board. Um, there was no real greens expert left on the board. And so I got tasked with chairing the greens committee, um, but I'm only doing it because I have access to an expert such as Charlie to help um, guide um, through that process. So um, it, it's the only way that I could um, chair the committee. Um, so I'm going to um, moderate this, but but Charlie is your expert speaker. Um, um, so I had this slide up just at the beginning. So this is an online meeting. I am recording it so that we can post this later. Um, and I will generally mute people. Um, and if you um, have a question, you can tap it, type it in the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, now, just before we get to the other things, two things. So I want to begin um, with a, a land acknowledgement. So we are um, meeting on um, the um, lands that have been traditionally held by Indigenous people, and we want to acknowledge the importance of the lands that we call home. And we do this to affirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. We acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all Inuit, Métis and First Nations people that call this land home. The OLBA is on the traditional territories of more than 130 First Nations, including the Anishinaabe Nation, Anishinaabe, ASCII Nation, Grand Treaty 13, the Iroquois, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples, and many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Um, and Greens manuals. Okay, so we have a bit of a challenge actually at the OLBA right now. So we, the OLBA, purchased enough Greens manuals so that every club would receive one free of charge. And so what we did was we gave them out to the district chairs at the annual general meeting hall of fame in April with the objective that they would distribute them to the clubs in their districts. Based on a recent poll, it suggests that as many as one third of clubs have not received their manuals. So we're thinking that probably people haven't looked hard enough. So what I would ask everyone to do is if you're not sure if you've got your manual, please double check at your club. Actually go look where you keep this kind of stuff and you might find it there or check with your district chair to see whether maybe they haven't given it to you. If after double checking you haven't received your copy, please email um, Rob Gallipo, um, our executive director, um, and we will see about ordering some more. However, um, unless the number comes down from a third, we're going to make people do a little more checking because there's no way that a third of people did not get their manuals. So, um, this is going to be mostly a, a question and answer type um, uh, situation, but um, we do have a, a, a notional agenda. So um, it's here on the screen. So I'm going to let Charlie take it away and mute myself. And right now everybody's muted. Um, and then we'll pause um, for um questions and if you've got questions please either raise your hand or type um, in the chat okay uh, I don't know if you can't see me I got something I just went in front of my, of my picture there but, but regardless of what you'll be able to hear me yeah we can hear you Charlie okay uh, well first of all what you what we do in the fall will dictate how our green are going to be in the spring there's no two question about it there's uh, uh, no argument about it uh, if you don't do anything to your green whatsoever you're going to have the same thing as what you had last fall and it's, so it's very important if you want to start off on the right foot that you do your homework you do your work in the fall and it's it's very labor intense but it is worthwhile, believe me. I think I'll start with, there was four questions that was asked. Uh, 
before before we go to the closing of the green and one was the how did you repair bare patches well i, I got some notes here uh, it's what the first thing you have to do is find out why you got bare patches is it caused by wear and tear is it tree roots is it localized rare area compaction or is your sprinkler system not reaching like some parts of the, part of the green and you're getting uh, not enough nourishment not enough water so your grass died so you have to find out what is the problem first what you see on top is just see a bunch of dead grass but the problem is not on top the problem is probably underneath it like for instance if it's uh if it's compaction the first thing you have to do is sort of loosen up the soil you might have to go down what's six seven inches deep just loosen up the soil back it down again and then you can overseed it or at this time of year I prefer to sod it if it's localized dry area uh, the way to find out if you get your tester or, or anything even a screwdriver and you stick into the ground you can only go a deep about two and a half inches two inches two and a half inches and the rest is just like concrete down there well let's call localized dry area and i i don't know uh, how it's it gets started but if you don't break that up uh you can reseed it you can or start it the next next year you're going to have the same problem so the only way you can do it is if it's not too big an area, just get your electrical drill with a half inch or a five eight auger on it and just drill hole about eight, nine inches down, maybe every three inches, and then give it a real good soap, soap, soak with water. If you have some wetting agent, that's the time you put wetting agent in there, and eventually that will break up all that hard stuff down there and, and you'll be okay. But if you don't go through the they're trying to find out what's wrong in that area you might get lucky it might grow again uh, it might just be that you were not getting any water on there and the rest of the soil is, is okay but 90 percent of the time you're going to have to investigate what is the problem to do it and like i said for this time of year i prefer sodding this instant and you, you'll get about a month growth before the winter set in Okay, so if you have some question on that, you can ask uh, whoever sent that, that uh, question. If you want to uh, ask some more question, we'll, we'll try to help them. If not, the second question was vertical cutting versus air rating. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they go hand in hand. Uh, I'll explain the difference between vertical cutting and, and uh, air rating. If you can only do one of them, uh, especially if you haven't verticals regularly, air rating is the way to go. But the problem is the air, the air rating will only take half an inch plug or so. The vertical cutting will cut line every, I don't know, but a quarter of an inch or, or half an inch each but it's a two different animal and i'll explain to you later and the second the third question was black algae well black algae will only grow where your turf is weak or there's no grass it will algae will not grow on grass so to uh, to avoid getting black algae make sure you get a lot of a lot of grass on your green but once you get it, there's not much we can do about it, except if it's just a little a little spot here and there, you can always take some plug out and, and take some nice green plug from the side of your green somewhere and, and replace them. Or if it's out of control, uh, you can use, uh, there's, a there's a combination, you can use bleach, one part bleach to 50 by 50 parts water. More than that, you might kill your bent grass, but it, it will not kill the algae. It will just control it. The algae that grows on your on your greens, the same algae that grows in your swimming pool. So, the bleach will sort of control it. 
But the best way to do it is make sure you got grass so you won't have to worry about algae. And the fourth question was ant hills. Well, they've been a problem this summer for some reason. And I, I believe that uh, the more sand we use in our green, the more accessible we, we, are, we are to, to ants. The dewworm doesn't like sand, but the, the, the ants seem to like it. So the best way to do it, I, I don't know if they're active now or not, but there's a material you can buy at the garden stores. It's called Malatanian, M-A-L-A-T-H-I-O-N. And it's a small bowl and it costs about $30. And you, if you put about 10 milliliter, and that's not much, into a liter of water. And I use one of the spray bottles you can buy at the dollar store for a dollar and a quarter. And don't put it on spray, you just put it on the, where you get a nice stream and get close to where you see the, the anthill in the hole and just give it a couple of shots right in the little hole down there. And it will, it will kill the ants. And depending how much you have, uh, but you have to control them somehow, so that's one way of doing it. And that will probably last a week, and then they'll move somewhere else. But, so you have to keep an eye on where they start. As soon as they start, just keep doing the same thing. And then the last one was water frequency. Fre how many times you water? Well. Uh, the weather has lots to do with it. If it's going to rain, if it's going to rain tomorrow, you're not going to water tonight. So, I just water as needed. I have a, a, a cheap moisture meter you can buy at the garden center for about nineteen dollars. And when the the greens start looking like they need water, I just test the moisture meter, and if it's need water, just water it. So the on the on the, on the moisture meter, you see there's three color. Red is dry, and then you got green, and then you got blue. Well, ideal for lawn bowling is the top part, the stop, the first inch should first inch should be red. That's dry. That's good for bowling. At the put the two to three inches deep, it should be green. That's moist. At the six inches, it should be blue. That's ideal. So that's one way you can know need the watering as far as the automatic a lot, of, a lot of people are using the automatic and i'm not saying you should not do it but i've been to some green somewhere where it's raining and the water sprinkler is on so there's there's no need for that okay that's so, a, that's that's the fourth question we had so and then yeah so we we've got a couple more questions charlie okay um, so um I'll get to you in a moment, Neil, because the questions came in first before mm -hmm. you raised your hand. So the first question has to do with the overseed rate, in particular, the number of pounds per square foot. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Neil, you, you know me. I'm not a. I'm, uh, I'm not too good at. I just put it this way: a, a, a pail of seed is twenty-five pounds, and. I probably would put maybe seven or eight pounds per green every fall. So you figure it out. You have you, like I got two greens, so you have one green down there. So uh, if you buy a a, a a pail and the type of seed I, uh, that was recommended was T1, and apparently it's, it's pretty uh, hardy, tough grass. So and, and a so, so that that works out to a, a almost a pound per rink. Yeah. If you have no, eight no, rinks. No, no, I got two greens, so I got sixteen ring. Right, but you said you use yeah. a, about seven or eight pounds per oh, rink. Yeah. 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 So that's about uh, um a uh, a pound per um. Our, yeah, you're good. Yeah. yeah, you could do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because not everybody has eight. Um, rinks on their green some yeah. have less yeah. um, so the next but, question is around verta cutting and how often you should do it uh, Lloydwood in his book 
he says we should verdict it once a week. But I, I, it's it's a lot of work. Uh, we, I do our green. I would say probably an average of three times a week, like three three times. Uh, let me say this: every three weeks. I, this is my, this is what I try. Like in this in May, June, you can do it more often. July and August, when it's nice and dry and and the grass is, doesn't grow that much, I would see if you do it once a month. You would, do, you know, that, that would be sufficient. Then come September and October, you can you can start over again, go deeper. But uh, but once you get to the point where you don't have that much stash on the green, what you what Lloyd would was saying is. Like you don't really give it a, a really deep verticut, more or less like a little tickle just to uh, to take out the, the dead stuff that's on top. Because you do, if you were going to go and, and do a real verticut once a week, by the time the middle of July and August come, you wouldn't have too much grass on your green. So you have to be very careful. Uh, one way that I look at it, when the greens are dry, and you just you just cut you just mold your grass, and it's it's nice and everything. You look, you take a bowl and you roll a bowl down the green, and if you see the track where the bowl is gone, you know you got dash on your green. That's that's when you vertical. So I don't know if it makes sense, but if you cut your green, uh, I would say. Uh, a quarter, uh, like in, you start in the spring quarter of an inch, so you go down five thirty second. I try to cut our green at five thirty second. Five thirty second. If you cut your green uh, three times a week, uh, you and you don't overwater, you don't have thash on your green. Your green should just like that should run at least ten second or more without rolling or anything. If you have a roller and you roll it, you, sh you should expect to go around the 12 second. So the, ver the verticutting is the one that, that will give you the speed because if you got thash on your green, it's just like a just like a felt underneath all that grass. The water will not cannot escape it. It cannot seep down. Uh, everything stays on the first quarter of half inch of the green and that's what slows your green. You got your dash, you got your water. Uh, the fertilizer just stays on top. You have to uh, you have to remove the tash so the water can get down to the four, five, six inches deep. So that and and keep the moisture down there so the root can. The deeper the roots are, the tougher your your grass is going to be. Right. Okay. So, does that make sense? Um, I don't see a follow up in the <laughs> chat. So um, Neil has a question. So Neil, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yep. There you go. All right. So Charlie, talking about ants, uh, we've had a, a nightmare of a season this year with ant hills. Uh, we're having to harrow the greens uh, between mows just to keep them level. Um, have you heard of the use of nematodes uh, to treat uh, uh, rampant uh, ants? We tried it this year. We didn't find a lot of success with it, but I don't know if maybe you've heard yeah. if, uh, if it works for uh, other places. Yeah, I heard about it, and it's uh, that's the stuff you got to put on, and, and then you got to keep watering. Did you read the instruction properly? I would. I was told that when you uh, minotope, you got to you have to, it has to to go down. If you just put it on top on the surface, you're not going to come and get it. Is the it's got to it's got to go down to where the their nests are. Yeah, so, and it also also required that you kind of got to find a, a three or four day period where it's overcast. That if you get sun, it'll just burn it off and it won't do anything. So that's right. Yeah, that's this. I guess it would, might be might be good to do in the spring uh, because you know it's, you get rain most often. But you should when you put this stuff on, you got to water it for about four or five days anyway, pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I never tried it. I just I just go around with my little bottle once a week, and if I see a little ant, I'll just I just knock it out with that uh, monotonian. 
It's very got strong, it. st very strong stuff. It'll kill your grass also, so you got to be very careful. Right. But it, it'll it'll kill the ants. Or if you want to use, uh, if you got enough stuff that's not going to hurt anything, you, you can spray some icing sugar and and baking soda on your green. The ants will like the the. Uh, the sweetness of this and they take it to the queen and everybody blows up after eating the it's cruel but that's one way to control them and there's no problem spraying that over the uh, surface of the grass no okay yeah. and a related question um is worms <laughs> so how do you get rid of them and do you actually want to keep them or are they a good thing uh the, the farmers likes the worms uh and actually they're good they're good for your greens but they're awfully messy they ruin your blades on the lawnmower uh they uh when, if you bowl over them it's not very pleasant i went to a tournament one time when they had a pail of water at each end so you could wash your bowl after there was so many dew worms on it uh there is some there is some material and i keep asking i, I got an ipm certified and i keep Ask him for what's a good material for it, and uh, oh, he's, he, he, they love it in the golf course, so they're not going to kill them. Uh, so I haven't come up with a, but I know somebody was telling me, and I, I didn't write it down. Uh, apparently, this material, and I, I think it was, it could have been uh, Jim Rowe, I think. Yeah, he, he sprayed some stuff. Maybe John Patton might know. I think I saw, I just saw, John. are you there, John? Can you unmute, John? John Patton? Um, sorry, I just want to jump in. I just heard the other day that ceramic sand, when you're sanding, ceramic sand will kill the worms, but I've also heard it might wear your bowls down. Uh, well, I guess you could, but I mean it's awfully expensive. Like I, I use the, the sand from uh, Hutchison, and I think it's about fourteen or fifteen dollars a ton. But the delivery charge is off. It's, it's very expensive. It's not actually sand; it's crushed stone. Uh, and yes, the ant don't like it. Uh, but it, I, I don't like they'll kill and they just move somewhere else. So I, I. But there's a, there's a, I'm sure there's a chemical that you can spray on. But right now I, I don't know, and uh, and the reason the reason it's not publicized is because of the, I guess the, the government or whatever it is don't want us to use that stuff. We don't want to kill the, the worm. So I don't know what's the. But I'll try to find out during this winter. I know we had a problem one time, but. It's, it's the uh, seem to disappear. I don't have I don't have any worms anymore, uh, and I just uh, took it for granted. That's probably because we top dress every every fall. There's John. There's John Patton. There I can see him. John, can you hear me? No. Okay. So anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So we, any anything that we we find out in response to questions, we'll we'll post on we'll the post website. It up, yeah. Yeah. And and we'll post the um, recording. If I have time, I'll also try and do just a little bit of a sort of a table of contents yeah. that says that you know the discussion about um, you know worms was at um, whatever mark in the recording. Um, so um, Mike D had a question. So Mike, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. You just have to click on the little microphone at the bottom, Mike. No, Mike, I can't hear you. Nope, can't hear anybody. Yeah, yeah. So, Mike, you, you haven't unmuted yourself, so you can type your question, or or we can come back to you. So, um, the next question we have from is where can we 
purchase sod for patching? Uh, there's there's two places that has the sod. If you're in in the Toronto area or or west, uh, Hamilton Sod in Hamilton uh, have sod, and they're just outside Brantford. I think it's called Beaufort, Ontario. You can go and and pick it up. You can order it, and you can go and pick it up. Uh, and it's not that expensive. Uh, I think I paid just over five dollars a roll, and one one roll will cover ten square feet. It's it's two twenty four inches by five feet. So, and it's always had good luck with them. And, and the uh, other place? And the other place is out in, in the east. Uh, oh my gosh! It'll come to me in a minute. Uh, Dole Turf, I think. Dole, D O D O L S Turf. I think they're around Markham Way somewhere. They have a, they, they do, uh, they look after a lawn bowling club and everything. I think it might be a little bit more expensive, but. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll try and get yeah. the, um, the, the addresses um, for those and, um, uh, and post them as well. Um, it, it, it may not be this week, but I will do it. Yeah. Um, the best, the best way, to, the best way to, in your area, uh, go to a golf course, and you know, ask them where they get because they, some of them as nurseries, and or they would know where where to get uh, box sod. So. Right. Because we're using the same. It's the same type of sod as all the golf course, the, the golf greens. Right. And then um, Mike has a question. Do you recommend adding topsoil to sand and seed to fix dead spots? Nope. Never use topsoil. Just pure sand. A lot of, some people uh, use a, a mixture of uh, 80, 80, 20 or 70, 30. But uh, all the gold golf course on their on their green, not but topsoil. They just put pure sand. Right. I don't recommend it, but if, uh, the trouble is, we put topsoil, then you're going to have more compaction. Then the more compaction you're going to have, the more bare patches you're going to have. Okay. Um, do we have other questions that people want to um, um, type in the um, the others? Um, so, Mike, you've raised your hand again. Are you able to unmute now? Nope. No. Okay. So Jeff um, Shuri, you have a question. So you could unmute yourself. You just click on the little microphone button yes. in the bottom. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Charlie. Good morning, everyone else. Um, I'd like to ask about leveling the green. Um, our problem is on our rinks, uh, particularly when you're bowling east-west, the left side of the rinks run straight and the right side of the rinks have a big turn in it, maybe a six mm -hmm. foot turn. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a screed, although we're, we have priced it out and we're looking at possibly getting one. Can you recommend um, what I can do um, this fall without a screed uh, to start the leveling process? Anything that's, that's, that's rigid, any, uh, like any steel angle or, or even if you get a, a, a piece of two by six, two by eight, uh, maybe 12 feet long and and just you know put your sand in front of it and j just move the thing over so you you level it off uh, you don't want to put too much sand at, at a time uh, if you have a severe hole like it might take you two or three years to fill it but at least you have to start somewhere I wouldn't put any more than a quarter of an inch like uh, in the fall, uh, when I put sand on on low hole, I like to see the top of the grass just showing above the sand. So anyway, but it, if you if you get if you have the new book that that uh, OLBA give you, if you go to page one hundred, 
there's a the rigid drag is is out there and all the dimension and you can go to any place man uh, that built them and i had mine built all oh, probably 15 15 years ago and it cost me 250 dollars so that was uh, well well money well spent uh, yeah. so that's but, what the the manual looks like oops yeah there we go. It's on page 100, and if you have the old one, it's on page 62. Okay. But when you do, when you uh, when you use that rigid drag, uh, if you want to if you want to know where the low spots are, if you get there one morning, when the dew is on the grass, you just run it up and down your green, and crossways. Then, whatever the snow dew. That's either a high spot or a level spot. It will not take the dew on the low spot, and that's where you see where the low spots are. Then you can put sand, or you know, get some chalk and mark mark where the low spots are. Then go back with a wheelbarrow full or something sand and throw some sand in there and level it off. You, could, you know, if you don't have anything else, you could use a rake or or whatever it is. But like you said you you have to start somewhere. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. And um, there was a, oh, hang on. So my my screen is not showing everything at once. So just give me a second. Ah, there we go. Um, so the question is, what direction do you roll and what is considered a polishing roller versus a heavy roller? Okay, the difference between a roller and a polisher, uh, what they call a roller is when you, uh, when you see them on the highway paving the road or something, that's a roller. Uh, it's it's not as wide as a polisher, and it's a lot heavier. Uh, like a roller, you can buy the cane tire. I think you put about fifty gallons of water in it, and you roll. You can roll your lawn. That's a roller. The polisher, it's about the, the roller itself is probably about six feet wide. And it will not damage your green. It will not put any ruts or anything like that. And when you roll your green, uh, I usually roll from corner to corner, same as the way that we we cut the grass uh, first. And then I go, if, we, if I'm going to be bowling north and south, I will roll east-west. Then I make sure I get all the green. Okay. Right, and then um, there's a related question, um, which is um, a local paving company has suggested that they could bring in their rollers to do the leveling. Do you think this would be beneficial? No, definitely not. The only thing it would do is compact. They're, they're, these big rollers are made for one reason, it's to compact. You compact the asphalt, the gravel, or anything like that, and you don't want your green to be, you want them to be firm, but you don't want to compact them. Uh, uh, and there's a, there's, there's a study that's going on right now. Uh, like I was at the Guelph Symposium last winter, and there was somebody from Massachusetts, the University of Boston. And there's a study going on now that, uh, they say that rolling, polishing your green once or twice a week will help you also with the dollar spot. Uh, and it's, it's, it doesn't hurt the green. Apparently, it's helped them. So there's a big study going on. It's not finished. Uh, I intend to go back this winter. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll hear more about it. See, what's happening with the, with the dollar spot disease? Uh, in the United States, they got about 15 different material they can use. In Canada, I think we got about four, the most. And if you're going to keep using the same chemical for the dollar spot, it's getting it. You're getting immune to it. Same as taking aspirin all the time, you're going to you're getting immune to it. So you have to keep changing. Like right now, I, I use two of the best. This one is Xterus, and the other one is Daconil. But I keep swift shifting back and forth. Uh, and instead of trying to get some more chemical now to uh, to stop the disease, they're trying to 
figure out something that they could put in the soil that would eliminate the dollar spot. Yeah. But it's it's a study and this might take before we get back to the market, it might be about 10 years. So in the meantime, we have to deal we have to deal with chemical. But everybody's trying to get off the chemical, but polishing your green is one way that we can we can uh, help the dollar spot. And, yeah. a good, and a good example is we got two greens in Burlington. One is right in front of the clubhouse. The other one is about maybe 20 feet farther away than, than the, the north green. So they're using the north green all the time. And so it's being used by bowling and it's a lot of traffic and everything. And I got less dollar spot in the north green than I got in the south green. I got There's more dollar spot in the south green. So it's one way that it tells me that the more traffic and the more you roll your green, the less dollar spots you're going to have but i'm i'm going to keep track next year make sure right but it's just an observation <laughs> it sounds a little bit like antibiotic um resistance um and 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 wanting to avoid antibiotics if you don't need them similar chem yeah. you want to avoid the chemicals that's right um, yeah. um so um one of the questions that got emailed in in advance um it was actually from georgetown so they're going to be replacing their board soon and mm -hmm. so they were wondering about has anyone ever used a sod cutter on bent grass and how did it work because they're they're wondering about if they lift some sod along the edge of the boards and then reuse it to repair the green after the the board's work is done mm -hmm. yeah we we did that uh probably 10 15 years ago at burlington we uh like we had dole turf come in with their uh with their sod cutters and it took three rows all the way around because the green was sloping to the to the plant so we rate we raised the plant someplace with about three inches two inches and uh and then they put sand pure sand rolled it down then we put the sod back on the same sod we took off and uh it worked out well so it can be done. Okay, I think we lost Karen. I'm, oh, there sorry. you are. Yeah, I muted myself. So um, <laughs> I think Mike had raised his hand. Um, do you have? Um, are you able to unmute now, Mike? It's it's that little microphone button down near the the on the bottom toolbar, the last on the left. It's not working. Okay, I'm reading your lips. So yeah, go ahead and type in the chat and I'll happily read out your question. And oh, there was somebody else who raised their hand and um, I can't see who that was now. So if there was somebody else who had a question, you can unmute and ask your question. Hi, Charlie, it's Jeff Sherry from Muskoka. Um, we need to replace our plinths as um, the three by six hemlock that we installed originally is rotting. Um, and we've received a quote on doing it in an inch and a half PVC, um, which of course wouldn't rot after mm -hmm. we did. Um, do you know anyone that has used PVC to replace their plinths? And what do you think about an inch and a half? Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't heard anybody doing it. Uh, I heard somebody says, it, it would be too expensive uh but it's a, it would be a one-time expense because they'll never rot but i would be a little concerned to one and a half that it might it might bend like i got uh, we got two by six and we got a bracket an underneath bracket every uh every four feet yeah that's what we intended yeah and uh it's it sort of keep it Sort of keep it pretty straight. I would be a little uh, uh, because I know we got some of the benches around our club with that stuff, and you can see where the people are sitting down, and it's really bending, like you know. So I, I don't know. I don't know if any club that has used it. So I cannot answer you. I'm sorry. It's okay. But our I, quote. I would. Uh, we have, how much we would? You, how much they quote you for that? Uh, for our, we have eight rinks, um, and with with the HST, it's seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Well, that's not too bad. 
And we think we have the people, um, the volunteer, we can do the labor ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we did it ourselves. The, the plant itself is not that bad. Uh, right. Uh, as long as long as you only take one chunk at a time, like you know, our pl our plant was sixteen feet long, and so you, you we just take the piece and then we just drop in another one, and they're all bolted together. So it's not a it's it's, it's labor and it's labor intense, but it can be done. Great, thank you. Um, so Neil has a question. Yeah, Charlie, um, we've applied for the New Horizons grant uh, to replace our boards for next year. Mm -hmm. um, if they come in, great. Uh, if they don't, we still have some repair work that we have to do to kind of get them in game shape. Um, the brackets that you guys used in Burlington, the U brackets, mm -hmm. secure the, the distance between the uh, plinth and the backboard. Um, did you buy them uh, off the shelf or did you actually have them made? We had them made. That that's was the original. That uh, they're the original bracket when they were built in 1971. So, uh oh. So anyway, uh, uh, I can give you some. I I can back go back to the club later on. Give you some dimension if you want. But uh, you know what they were. You know what they were. Just a a, a piece of metal and two pieces welded on each end. Right. Yeah, I'm at Port Credit today, and um, they just are have pieces of um, two by four that they've got um, in the ditch to in, instead of a metal bracket, but it does the same bracing. Yeah, my only concern with wood is that it'll rot a lot faster. Metal will last. Yeah. That's yep. right. Yeah. Yeah. If you can and do, the, go ahead. If you can do the metal, that's fine. Uh, you know that's because it's, it'll never rot. Ours have been in the ground since 1971 and it's still still as good as the day they put them in there. So, and it's it's secure and never bent. Yeah. And there's somebody else who's raised their hand, but I don't have a name because they signed, yeah. they logged in without a name. So if you want to unmute, go ahead. Okay. So it's Dan Turner. Um, just back to the screed, the 14 foot screed. Um, the shoes on the bottom, um, should they be um, flush with the screed uh, or should they hold the screed slightly above the grass? I assume it's you want to insert them in so that the full screed runs along, right along the ground. That's right. Yeah, okay. they're level, okay. level, level with the with the bottom. Like you mean the, the footing so it yeah. doesn't it doesn't fall over yet. Yeah, yep. thank you. <laughs> If you if you look at on page one hundred for that book there, it'll it'll show you exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's just the the drawing. I I wasn't sure yeah, if the yeah, the shoes yeah. held it up a bit or not, but yeah, you answered no, my question. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. There. Yeah, there it is. There's yeah. the diagram for those who don't have their manual handy. <laughs> All the dimension are there, so that's not a. Yeah. So do we have other questions? So just while people are collecting their thoughts, um, so my email is here on um, the slide. It's atkin at olba.ca. If you um, don't have pen and paper to write it down um, or you forget, you can just go on the OLBA website and you'll find me there. Um, and you can email me. I'm, I'm on my email. At, at least every other day, um, sometimes every day for OLBA stuff. And um, I will um, get any questions to Charlie or another one of the experts on the Greens Committee um, if it's um, not something that I'm able to address. Um, and as I mentioned at the outset, I'm going to repeat it because I know that a number of additional people have joined us, is we did send out these um, Greens manuals. We provided one through the district chairs to every club um, for every club. About a third of clubs are saying they didn't get them, which is is kind of surprising. I, I I would expect that a few wouldn't get them, but everybody else should have. So double check around your club 
um, uh, and with your your um, the person who might talk to the district chair the most. And um, and then if you still can't find it, email um, Rob Gallopo or myself and let us know that you haven't received them. And then we're going to figure out um, how we're going to get some more manuals um, and get them out to people. The challenge is at this time of year is is um, it's it's pro the cost to um, mail them out is, is would be a lot, whereas we use the 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 labor of our district chairs at the annual meeting to to do that. So we'll 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 deal with that to try and get them out for people who don't have them. Um, and if you're really crunched, you can always maybe go to a neighboring club and borrow theirs temporarily. Um, so I see Neil has a question. Neil always has a lot of questions. <laughs> Charlie, yeah, yeah. I just wanted. Uh, I'm not sure if you were going to do this or at the end of the call. Just give us the order, the preferred order that you would suggest um, people follow in order to close the green. Do you uh, uh, aerate first or thatch first? Uh, what is it? The order that you prefer uh, in Burlington? Okay. Uh, the order. The first thing we'll. The first thing we'll do. We're going to close the green on. Monday to be the last tournament on Tuesday morning, we will vertica and, you know, give it a really good vertica. That's what we're going to do the first thing. And we'll clean it up. And usually I got a bunch of very anxious people. So my plan is to vertica, clean it and go home and relax. The next day we come in, we will aerate it. Our aerator got a half inch uh all of time uh, side discharge not the one with the just the hole that goes through the top it goes on the side so it does a better job and so we'll aerate that the second day we'll have a probably six people with shovel snow shovel pick up pick up all the the plugs discard them third day We'll get this sand spreader going. Got about 15 tons of sand. We'll probably use about nine or 10 ton to fill up all the holes for bolt green. So we'll top dress. Once that when that's done, next day we'll overseat. Then we'll use a flex drag and drag all the seed and everything. You seed the sand, make sure all the holes are filled. Uh, in the corners or close to the plant, sometimes you, uh, the flexible drag doesn't do it. So you get a couple of people with wheelbarrow full and, and uh, sand and shovel and rake and fill up all the holes around the in the corners and uh, and close to the plant. The next day, hopefully, uh, we we'll use the rigid drag to level the grain. That's probably use another two or three tons of sand. And that's pretty well the, the, la the hard labor work. And after that's done, uh, I know people, a lot of people suggest you don't fertilize past September. But for the last couple of years, I've been using sustained fertilizer. I think it's there's very little uh, nitrogen or something but it's 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 good for the a lot of potash in there and it it's uh not potassium uh so anyway it's good for the root system so i usually put about three bags per green and it's not that expensive about thirty dollars a bag all it is is turkey manure uh and once i finish that i usually put a, a bag of High nitrogen, like 2200, one bag per green. That will sort of keep your green alive until the, the snow comes in. And if you have algae on your green, not, not too many people suggest that, but I firmly believe in, in lime. So I usually put one bag of lime per green. It's in in this real lime is, is sort of very fine and it's it's easy to put on. And that's what we do, and then we let them go. 
until probably the first week of December, the last week of November. Then uh, I would put a a winterizing winterizing material to stop the snow mold. It's called uh, dedicate D E L I C A T E. Put one liter per grain. It's very strong stuff. And that's it. That's the sit for the winter. It doesn't seem like much, but you got about two weeks of work right there. Right. Um, so Bob McQueen has a question, but I'm going to do Mitch's first, which is because I think it's very related to what you've just said, which is what's the latest time to overseed? Uh, I, uh, I, I'm pretty, we're pretty well finished, but like around the, around the 20th of October, I would say, uh, would be pretty the limit. I won't go any farther than that. At one time it was fifth ever the fifth fifth ever the fifteen. That's when everybody stopped seeding. But now they're seeding right down to the end of October. So. Right. Okay. Um, Bob McQueen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, just uh, hi, Charlie. Um, Karen, just it's just a um, you were talking about ants just a little while ago. Um, what happened, uh, our agri company, they, uh, they had recommended a, a product called uh, Pounce. It's 384EC, and uh, you have to have a license to buy it, of course. So we, what we had done, nobody in our club has a, has a license, so we had hired a guy to uh, come in. And, uh, I think we put on four or five applications that seemed to, that seemed to get rid of the, uh, uh, the large portion of the, of, the, of the ant problem that we had. So... Uh, ever since the city quit uh, spraying in 2018, I believe, uh, the ants have progressively gotten worse over the years. And this year is probably the worst. Uh, just yeah, like it, some it's episode. been bad this year. What was the name? What was the name of the material? It's called Pounce, P O U N C E. It's 384 E C. 384 A C. E C. E is in Edward? E is in Edward, yes. And he is in Charlie. Yeah. Now it, it usually runs in around the seventy-five uh, to eighty dollars for a liter, and they had recommended uh, to put down um, um, fifteen milliliters per sixty liters of, uh, of water. We bought a sprayer this year, and it's it, uh, it really really seems to have worked. So I mean, uh, uh, we're going to continue on continue on next year. We just put our last op application on yesterday, so. And like I say, it's uh, the ants have just about all gone. But of course, it's that time of year too, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it seems to be working anyway. So that's great. Yeah, that's just, great. Just for the information for everybody else, I'm not going to say it's going to work for everybody, but uh, you know, maybe something to consider next year. Yeah. yeah, I know I was talking to somebody that's is working with uh, uh, the the people that make the aspirin. What's their name? Uh, Bear. They, yeah, the, and they were they were trying to de to design a. a a product that everybody could use without using a license. So, but I, I don't think they can do it. Right. Oh, well, okay. Here I am. I thought I lost myself, but I'm, I'm back. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, buddy. Right. So, um, Mike has a question about: Has anyone heard from Trillium about their spring um, grant application? And um, actually, a good timing for that question, Mike, because I just got Ralph's report because we have a board meeting tomorrow. And um, it sounds like um, no one um, who applied through the Resilient Communities Grant for Trillium was successful. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, and then Mike also asks about watering um, during the winter prep. Uh, it's not necessarily. Usually we get enough moisture from the rain or snow or, uh, and there's very little evaporation, evaporation. The reason we have to water in the summertime is that the heat and the sun and just evaporate the water. Uh, but this time of year, uh, usually get a heavy dew in the morning and that's sufficient to keep the grass going. So, like over watering does just as probably more damage than under watering. For this summer, I I don't think I use a sprinkler more than five or six times. Uh, right. Nice. 
So anyway, yeah. uh, we've been lucky. Uh, that's, that's what I keep saying. God's sprinkler is a lot better than what we have. So <laughs> just keep using them. It's cheap. Yeah, yeah. The the dew is starting fairly early now. I I, I was doing a rental last night, and um, that it started about eight p.m. Um, the grass was extremely yeah. wet. We had to bring out the club towels for all the renters. Um, and I was just looking at the forecast, and and it looks like at the end of the month. Um, we're going to have a couple of days with a fair chunk of rain. There's one day where they're su suggesting as much as 10 millimeters, yeah. but that's at the end of September. So it depends yeah. on when you're planning on um, doing it. Um, so Jillian has her hand up if you want to unmute. Hello, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to ask a question about Japanese beetle. Does anybody have um, a good solution for getting rid of Japanese beetle? Thank you. Uh, I'll have to look to look it up. Uh, I, I had. I'm looking at my telephone here. I had something about Japanese beetles, so I'm just looking at it. So, so what we can do, yeah. Charlie, is um, is you can send me the link or um, or uh, the information that you have on the Japanese beetle, and then we can um, post it. And if anyone else has um, yeah. information for the Japanese beetle, they can um, send it um, to me, and and we can share it. Okay, uh, I'm just looking at borax here. That says it was good for. Fiesta. That's for creeping Charlie. No, Charlie? I'll, I'll be I'll be the best thing. I'll look it up and I'll I'll uh, send it to Karen and she can post it. Yeah. So yeah. Charlie. Yes. Yeah, just to let you know, we bought these um sachets which go in these what they look like bomb containers that you hang around the greens, and it's yeah. a uh, scent that attracts the queen which then falls into the trap and all the other drones follow her along so it gets them out of the grass and we filled two of them this year with it they seem to work really well and you can buy them at the local um, hardware store no oh, there you go right um so there is a nameless person with a question i think it might be dan again yeah okay i unmuted can you hear me yep yep okay, here's a couple of questions oh we lost okay. you yeah. If we're overseeding and the grass is poking up and it's calling for a frost, is there any advantage to going down at, you know, 4.35 in the morning and putting the sprinkler system on manual and rotating them through? Does that help keep the frost off the grass with watering? And number two question is, um, do you ever, does anyone ever put, uh, laundry detergent on a little bit of their sod to see what bugs come up so they know what type of pests they have if if they have any uh your first your, your what was your first question again first question about um going down and oh yeah manually yeah. sprinkling to keep the frost yeah. off the grass yeah. yeah you could if you want but uh, i never i never had that problem really yeah, we're Once a little colder up here, maybe so. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> Where's your club? Well, we're in Southampton, but yeah, I'm just. Yeah. Okay. We okay. need overseeding really bad, and I'm just. Yeah. We're got to go a little later than I would like, but I would. I was just worried about, yeah. you know, the frost k killing the grass, and and that would really put us behind. So. I. I yeah. So. It, so it, it would be it, if you can do it. That would be great, but I. Uh, so damn, so damn. Uh, it's just south of Owen Sound. Yeah, yeah, no. When are you gonna? When are you gonna close your green? You know, right at right at the uh, beginning of That's October. Okay. Yeah. So well, so, the, soon, the sooner you close, the better you're gonna be. Like the more, uh, and we we might be getting frost in in October or something like that. But it's not what they call a a, a killing frost. If it's if the frost, you know, only lasts a couple of hours, it's not going to kill your grass. Uh, if you get a frost that lasts about four or five hours or something like that, and the temperature then the temperature get below zero, that will hurt it. But if it doesn't, uh, 
the grass will survive. Yeah. So, okay. um, Dan, it's Karen. I'll um, just um, go on um, Alberta's um, website and and, uh, um, and because, of course, they're much farther north than us by just geography. So I'll see if they've got anything on their site, um, maybe about frost, because it, yeah. it, you know, it it is a geographic issue for sure. Um, those of us south in Toronto and down towards Windsor have it a lot less than you would. Yeah, and also about putting the soap on to see what kind of grubs or bugs come up. Oh yeah, like, uh, yeah. Wolf is doing all kinds of tests about it. And, and uh, uh, I think it says if you get more than five of them, well, you know, where you put your, your pail and they come out of there, then you have a problem and you, you should, uh, but I, ne I never had the problem of doing it. I never had a, a, a reason to do it. So we haven't done it. So I don't know if, if whatever they, uh, uh, the district, the area could be like, we're so close, we're so close to the, to the lake in Ontario, actually to get to, to the hard pan of the ground, we got to go about 18 feet on the ground. So most, most of our area is all sand. So maybe yeah. the bugs don't like the sand. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, and it sounds like the sharper sand helps maybe yeah. get rid of some of your bugs and stuff if you yeah. use a sharper sand. And 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 we're getting bunker sand from up in Thornbury. Yeah, um, I think it's more like a water wash. So I assume it's not a sharp sand, but I'm not positive. Um, so and then I also heard an old timer told me that if you use too sharp a sand, it wears your bowls down. But I I'm not sure about that. No, you. are this, apparently, well, if you uh, if you were to cut your green uh, on a regular basis, you, the sand will not be on top of the grass. The sand will be on, on the underneath the underneath the grass cover, so you should have no problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so I'm going to do the last question with Jeff, um, and then we're going to wrap up. Well, it's eleven oh eleven oh four. Yeah. Uh, okay, but I I want to I want to talk about the importance of vertical cutting before you, you do the air rating and top dressing. Right. So go ahead, Charlie. Okay. If you don't vertical cut and you got thash on your green and you're gonna air rate, that's gonna help. It's gonna help because it's gonna whatever the, the holes is, it's gonna take the tashers and everything. But if you don't, if you only vertical cut and you top dress and you haven't verticut all summer, you're only going to get a partial of the vert of the tash out. And that sand is going to be laying on, on a layer of tash. And it's just like if you were going to put a quarter of an inch felt on top of your green and you're going to put your sand on top. So you're going to have a spongy, a spongy situation, I would say, for probably six months before that tash decayed and become part of your soil and it's it creates what we call a layering if you take a, a sample of your green if you go down and take four or five inches plug and you look at it and on the top part you'll see where you put the sand then you got a black layer that's your tash and then you'll see probably where you top dressed up the year the year before it's different color it take it takes about a year for the attached to just disintegrate and become part of your soil, but then it 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 become it's it becomes a, a it become part of the soil, but it's it's a sort of it's not a, a compacting soil. It's just spongy. Uh, many years ago, one of the went green that they uh, in their wisdom they were hosting the Canadian in August and in the spring, they decide they were gonna vert, they're gonna top dress because the greens were not level or anything. So they, they top dress their green and the green hasn't been vertical for about a year or so. And that green was not very pretty because it was so soft. Uh, it didn't matter how, how, how short the grass was, you still were bowling on a, uh, like on a what I call it a piece of sponge uh, and you never get your speed it'll take about 
six or eight months before all that cash disappeared. So my suggestion is you do a, a really good vertical cutting and then you aerate and then put your sand. If, if you cannot do both, I guess vertical cutting would be the most important one. Aerate, aer, aerate it if you, uh, if you have a sand based green, it's not that important, but uh, if aer, aeration is, is, is major. That's going to create, that's going to help you because at least you're removing, you're removing maybe 20% of your green when you aerate and take the plug out and you fill them up with sand. So in the, now I would say 20% of your surface, your green is going to be brand new next year. Even if you didn't overseed, these holes will fill. Like the bent grass just creep, it just creeps in and, and turn up the holes. Uh, and you have, like I said, 20%. If you do that for five years, if you don't hit the same holes all the time, if you're lucky enough, you get, you know, but 75% of your green will be totally new. Uh, but the verdict cutting, the verdict cutting in, is very important because where the hole was, your rate is going to be brand new, but then the other two inches between the holes is going to be uh, full of tash and, and the sand. So it's not, you're not going to have the benefit. So the, 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 there is a diff, big difference between the two of them, but they go hand in hand. So if you give it a good vertical cutting and aeration and fill up, fill up all the holes, you would see a big difference next spring. When next spring, when you when you mow your green, and if you have a, a polisher, there's no reason why your green would not be running 11, 12 seconds right off the base, right off the bat, because. Uh, there's no there's no tash there to to hold your bowls, to slow down your bowls. So, so I my suggestion is you make sure your vertica, aerate, top dress, overseed, drag with the flexible drag, make sure all the holes are filled. And then the next thing after you have to do is if you have a rigid drag, just fill up fill up the like left rigid use a rigid drag. And if you're a lot of people don't do it, but uh, the sustained fertilizer is, is great to put in the fall. Any question on that? Uh, Charlie, we've got uh, an issue with uh, uh, an area that uh, has been a sort of a perennial problem uh, for us that uh, we don't have um, a lot of grass there. This year it's been much better, and uh, but the problem is the uh, the infill is uh is basically poana and uh as far as i'm concerned it's a pain in the butt to uh to deal with um it it's a surface but it's not nearly as uh, as good as what the uh, the bent is for sure i'm just wondering if you would uh, and 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 we did get uh, rid of uh, some of that by uh, aerating uh, earlier uh we just got a, a punch aerator uh, this year for the first I'm just wondering if uh, it would be a good idea to uh, actually go over that area a couple of times this fall uh, rather than just once. So you're putting more holes in there, I suppose, and then uh, and then uh, top dressing and overseeding. Is that something that sounds reasonable? Sure. Yeah. Hey, if, if you can, as long if you got the hydraulic one, the one that goes up and down, eh? Yes, just that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're okay, yeah. If you if you got the one with the roller, sometime it, uh, if you were going to go over twice, you might rip this, you know, rip your sod, your turf. But the the one the hydraulic one, yeah, I would I would do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit, yeah, a little bit more in that particular area than the the rest of the yeah, uh, yeah. the rest of the green. See, okay. there's a picture. Can you see the picture on the screen there? I I can indeed. Yeah. Okay. So see where all the little holes are. Like, yeah. Yeah. And where between the holes there, like you yes. see the snap, you see more sand between the holes. The holes are not quite filled, but so yeah. it, it will take a while for, for the, the grass to go through that sand there, but I, I'm sure that it was just uh, 
that's that's probably a picture I took there. Uh, it was not quite uh, a hole were not filled properly. Yeah. But even, no, but, e yeah. but even, even if they were just like that, the grass by the by the the first of May you would not see these these hole. The grass would have grown into it. Yeah, we're yeah. not worried about we're not worried about that. It's just the it's just getting rid of the the polana and yeah. uh, and getting bent in there. I think if you aerate it, um, well, we seem to have we seem to have the polana, not the not yeah. the bent. So I guess I guess overseeding is uh, is something that we would need to uh, to do there uh, as well. Yeah. yeah. So talk to your talk to your supplier and ask them what the T one T one seed is supposed to uh, sort of take over from the poana okay it's uh i've been using it for a couple of years but but the trouble with plant poana is it's a weed but it's nature to the country like you know if even if you try to get rid of it it's it's reseed itself so many times that it'll, the wind will blows it in and it'll and it'll grow because your greens is well fertilized and everything and it just loves it but if you look at if you look at it uh some of the top golf course in california that's all they're using for their game yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. they, and they love it so uh it like i keep saying every green in ontario is going after one that's 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 part of our world the, and if you're going to get try to get rid of it there's some material you can spray to get rid of it but it'll get rid of 90 percent or 80 okay. percent of the rest of the grass you got in your green so you have to be very careful so yeah. You have to start living with it. Did anybody any any trouble with uh, with crab grass on their green? You know that's good because I, I had a I had a couple of visit that's they had a lot of crab grass on there. We do. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there, there's a couple more questions, Charlie, but I do want to work towards winding up yep. so um mitch wanted to know whether the manual talks about and he's not sure the spelling the delicate compound that you can use on greens at the end of the season yeah okay that is a that is a chemical you need you need a a, a licensed person to buy it and spray it uh and it's like every other chemical it's very expensive it probably doubled in price the last couple of years uh, but we that was a, a one time we could use the ff2 we could buy it in bag and it was fairly cheap uh then the government got rid of it we cannot use it and then there was uh another material that came in it was very good but we cannot use it anymore you can use it everywhere else in the state but we cannot use it in canada so the last the only one right now that that'll deal with snow mold is uh dedicate right and, and then it, yeah go ahead. It, it comes it comes into it i think a seven liter jug so uh you're good for three years right and then um there's a question um does the sweeper clean work well or should you use snow shovels and i'm assuming that's meaning after aeration because you yeah. mentioned you use um snow shovels and you yeah we got a bunch of people that follows the aerator and Put them in a little pile and somebody else bob print come back after with a tractor and the trailer and a couple of guys shovel the little piles in the, the trailer and away we go right yeah because you know if, if you do it a lot you can have a you know you can see there's a lot of yeah. um debris after yeah, aeration yeah, there is, yeah 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 um and then yeah. um steve asks um about the different types of bent grass and what you should what clubs should be using what was that again bent grass yeah so there's different types of bent grass oh, yes yes and what's the best kind to use well i've been be dealing with ontario seed and uh jeff uffelman is this i guess the head salesman or wherever it is and uh i had him over to the green and and uh and took some samples and everything and and i guess sent it to, for to an, analyze it and he came out i get i asked him to give me a sort of a program where i could what would be best for our green and uh he came out with t1 would be because we had quite a bit of poa 
and uh, it seemed to be working okay. So right. I, I would suggest that to get the seed, if you get to the dealer in your area and ask him, you know, because we're fairly south in Burlington, that this might be good for us, but it might not work for in the, in the Ottawa area or somewhere where it's colder and different weather. But I, I would just ask your dealer what's, or the golf course, what they use for their green. Right. And, um, um, yeah, um, Cheryl says that in Stainer, they have a sweeper and it works well. So, yeah, the different solutions, different yeah. clubs. Yeah. Um, and Gord Smith has a question. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. So, um, um, I'd like to know, um, verticutting, like how deep are we going with a verticutter? Because I don't, I don't um, really know how deep we're going. I'm from Stainer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, if you if you have to book, and if you go, uh, hang on, I'm just looking here. I do have to book. Okay. Go to page. On page number nine, and you'll see a picture. That was that was a picture I took from Burlington. We're cutting, and at this time of year, if you don't see that mustache coming out of your green, I don't know if you can see it. Yep, I got, I got it, I got it here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you don't see that much, that. Uh, okay. And. Uh, you're not going deep enough for this time of year. In okay. the summer, in the summertime, it would be a different story. And if you okay. do it, I, I would say if you were going to detach your green once a month, let's like say April, May, June, July, and August, you would not have that mustache on it. Okay. But if, like, if you wait, like you know, we didn't do it. Let's say for August, you didn't do it. September, you didn't do it because at the end of the season, you got about three months attached. That's 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 your result. You would have that much stash to come out. Okay, that's good. And the other thing I had was uh, you didn't mention uh, actually cutting the grass before or during verticutting and, and aerating before you could you cut it, your grass lower or anything? Nope. Uh, at this time of year, we're, we're down to uh, 532nd, and that's what I keep it all summer. And I'll I'll be cutting the green and rolling them for the the jitney on Thanksgiving Day. So the, the next day we'll we'll verticut and the next day after we'll aerate. So okay, I thank just, you. Yeah, but come spring though, I will I would raise I would raise the lawn more to at least a quarter of an inch. Yeah, exactly. right. Okay. Okay, right. and then you gradually it'll probably take you three three adjustment before you get back to the. Because okay. you don't want it. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So um at, as um I mentioned before, but I'm gonna say it again, um, is you're welcome to email questions to us. Um, and so as as some of you know, Charlie and also members of his of, of the, the Greens committee, because it um we try and not have Charlie going to every corner of the province because the province is rather big and Charlie only is is one person um but we can have um somebody from the greens committee come out um if if there's things that you think need looking at alternatively um you can um if you've got a plan for putting your greens to bed and you want to just say hey um you know should i do this or this um you know send emails and and then you can always set up a call with somebody from um the greens committee um charlie or one of the other people and and they can help advise you if you're not sure um, cause the manuals only cover so much. Yeah. Okay. There was, there was somebody that mentioned about crab grass. They had all kinds of crab grass in their green. If you, if you only have, if you have only have a little piece here and there, you can always pick it up. Uh, and then that will, that will leave a, a hole and then you can fill it up with sand seed and, you know, fill up the hole. But if you got a lot of them, there's a, there's a chemical called dimension. D i m e n s i o n. You, the same thing. You need a license for that. But you only have a short window, so about maybe 
21 days to spray it. And I know it's going to sound silly, but the time to spray it is when the forsythia are in bloom in the spring. And once the forsythia, forsythia are finished blooming, it's too late. So you got to do it when the forsythia are in bloom. You got to, like I said, with 21 days. And uh, it's very powerful. You don't use that much stuff. Maybe a couple of ounces for your old green in about 50 gallon of water. I got I got a tank that holds 50 gallons. So we put maybe three ounces of that stuff in there and spray the old green and it will get rid of the crabgrass. And Cheryl's asking if we have a, a list of greenskeepers and um, we don't currently have a complete list of greenskeepers. And so um, that was something that um, I wanted to um, do, get a list of that. And I thought I would actually sort of wait until the bulk of the season was over because I know that um, greens people have been very busy either with the you know, tail end of championship season or getting ready to put their, their greens to bed. So um, I will be um, reaching out to try and get a, a full list of greenskeepers so that we can have um, um, better communication with all the greenskeepers. Okay, one thing I was going to mention that I forgot. Uh, it, when you aerate your green, if you don't have any uh, moles, on, the, on your green or anything like that. And uh, the plug seemed to be fairly like sandy or something like that. If, if you can't afford to get some good sand, you can use your flexible drag, let, let the plug dry up and then run over with the flexible drag. And most of the stuff will go back into the hole and just, just remove the piece of turf like you know that that stick on it uh it'll be better than nothing uh better to put new sand on there but if you don't you know if you don't have and this sand also is getting very expensive you can just drag the plugs break them down it'll go back in the hole it's not as good as like i said brand new soil but it, it will help and just remove whatever whatever is left on the on your flexible drag okay um, yep. Last question to Bob. He's got his hand up. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, what sand do you recommend? We use uh, mortar sand right now. Uh, mortars, mortar sand is to make bricks, you know, to put tie brick together. So you, if you use mortar brick, you go, you're going to have some compaction. Okay. The one, the one that's recommend is, uh, it's called bunker B sand and it's, uh, Point, uh, point zero zero five to point zero zero one five. Just uh, spell that truck, please. Bunker, B U N K E R, sand, B. Bunker sand. Yep. And that's what all the golf course use. Uh, apparently, uh, I get mine from Hutchison uh, Sand, and they're up north somewhere. But apparently there's somebody somebody else in the east that has also uh that type of sand Any, anybody that's that that has uh a golf course will be able to tell you where to get the sand uh charlie well, you can also get it from uh hutcherson is uh, his a uh uh, they've got a place in london ontario as well yeah uh, so okay good we're, we're getting we're getting ours out of london so i think they good. transport it down from the north uh to london or yeah. if you're in the east uh in toronto that sort of thing you can get it directly from uh from them there yeah i get it from there and, and the price of the delivery is more than the price of the sand itself yes it is <laughs> so anyway uh but it's an you, you gotta have it Okay, so let's see, what do we got here? Like, yeah, like I said, if you don't have any algae on your green, uh, or if, if, for instance, if you have a, a fairly new green, like Ann Kasser has, has a new green, and uh, I think this one up north, sometimes that you can get away with not removing the plug, just putting them back in there. But it's, that, that, as far as I'm concerned, you're defeating the, uh, you put a lot of work in air ratings, you might as well fill up the plug with good sand. 
And if you keep doing it every year, by I would say five or six years, then the first two and a half inches of your green is brand new soil. So, okay, is, is there any other question? When do we turn the water off before before the, before it, it freezes? I usually get mine done about the first week in November. Turn the, the water because it's only about eight. The pipes are only about eighteen inches in the ground, so. Or, or less in some places. We discovered yep. that they ours were right under the posts for our bench, and so our benches had had sunk, and they 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 burst our pipes. So yeah, you never know. <laughs> so okay, well, thank you, Charlie, and thank you everyone for the questions. Um, you know, once you get Charlie started, um, he, he's he's a font of knowledge, um, hence the him being um, one of the key sources for that greens manual. So um, I should be posting the recording sometime in the next week or so. Um, I just have to, it, it's dependent on some, probably some sorting out some technical stuff from my side, uh, but we'll get that up um, so that you can double check some of the stuff where maybe you're, you look at your notes and you're going, what did Charlie say about that? Um, and then you can share with anyone else who missed today. So thank you everyone. Okay, one, good, one thing you can do during the winter, uh, is think back of what you did last summer and what worked well for you keep doing what didn't work then you don't want to waste your time doing it again okay so i really suggest and it's very helpful it's been helpful even now i keep going back to i keep a log every day what we do in the green for what fertilizer we put in what kind of chemical uh weather and uh I can always go back to the last 10 years and, and see exactly what I did. And it, it's very helpful because it's such a, a turnover of Greenskeeper. Uh, it is very helpful for new people that take over. Then they, they, don't, they don't go into their job blind. They can always look at what you did that would help your press, uh, the next person taking over. And it will also help you because you know what you did last summer. Well, and for those of us who, who maybe don't remember as well, it was like, oh, it's, it's actually been too long since I last did yeah. something. It was three weeks and not two weeks. So anyway, yeah, uh, it's very important you keep it log. Sorry, a quick question for you. I heard you were probably the best lawn bowling greenkeeper in the world. Uh -oh. Do you have any, uh, how did you become that? By being interested, I... When I first started, I was I started bowling in 1994, mid in the 90, and I was bowling in Burlington, and the greens were nice and green and slow, but I loved them. I didn't know any difference until I started going out to tournament. And the, the first time I'd been to another green that was not Burlington was in Brampton. And Joe, I can't think of his last name, was the greenskeeper. And I went out there and I said, oh, wow. Boy, this is great. This is a lot easier to bowl than it is in Burlington. And I asked him what he was doing. And what, the first thing he said was vertica, vertica, vertica. So I said to him, uh, the next time you vertica, could I come and, and see what it looked like? He said, sure. So he told me what he was doing. And I went out and looked at him. And, and that's how I started. But my previous life, many years ago, I used to work for a construction company. And we were doing landscape and the building golf course. So that's how I got interested in growing grass. That's my passion. Well, thanks, you're great. We yeah. appreciate it. So you're never never too old, you gotta stop, you gotta learn something every day. So just when every time you go to a green and you like their green, ask them how they get there and they, they will help you. Matter of fact, Karen, I'm, I got a little bit of uh, news. Uh, I got a call from Bran Brantford City last week uh they're thinking they're thinking about building two greens two new greens they, they had been out of commission they used to have two greens out there but they've been out of commission now for about at least six or seven years so they're planning on building building a couple of greens and they want me to sort of help them out so i told them whatever they want and whatever they need from me i'll be able to give it to them so Excellent. That's my big. Yeah. Okay. 
I got nothing Thank else. You. I got nothing else. I, I got lots, lots more to say, but uh, I'll have to wait for another time. Yeah, Thanks, and Charlie. yeah, and then we'll we'll set up some some educational sessions for the spring. Hopefully, another session with Guelph, and 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 certainly a, a seminar with just Charlie, so we can. Um, uh, access his wealth of knowledge and um, will likely continue to do things um, with online options so that people don't have to come because I know everybody's scattered all over the province. So thank you for coming. And most importantly, thank you, Charlie. Thanks for your time, everybody. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. You're, okay, thank you. you're welcome. And don't, and don't forget, you can always call me or send me an email. I'll, I'll answer them. Thanks, Maybe Charlie. a couple of days, but uh, I'll answer them. Okay. But my okay. next my next month's going to be very busy from uh, October to I think it's the 10 or 11 till the end of the month. I'm going to be pretty busy. And Karen, what you said about next year, I don't know about next year. Like you know, I don't even buy green bananas anymore. So, <laughs> so you're a young but, man, Charlie. You'll uh, be around yeah. for a while yet. So have a good winter, and we'll see you in the spring. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Okay, here we go. And go.